and I have a guest commentator with me for the rest of the program who's going to give us her personal take on the news and issues of the day. And she's the journalist, political affairs commentator, and a RISE news analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And good to Thank see you again. It's been a while. Good to see you too. Just, just very briefly, what did you make of uh, Senator Ben Obi? I mean, you know, he said a lot of things in defense of his party, but an, an enormously articulate man. What was your assessment of the defense that he put up? Well, he is a very good spokesman mm. for his candidate, and that's to be expected. Um, Atiku Abubakar, Al Hadi Atiku Abubakar, the candidate of the uh, PDP, mm. is a political operator that has been um, in the trenches for a very long time. And Ben Obi, like he said, was his um, vice president mm. the, the last time. So his job is, is not that easy because in the southeast, where Ben Obi is. Um, uh, from Anambra State. Yeah, and he's the chairman of the PDP. Exactly, Labour Party. Pre pres uh, presidential campaign. Exactly, Labour Party presidential uh, candidate is also from Anambra Absolutely. State. Absolutely. So it's a tough one. It, it's difficult. Although majority of Southeasterners, uh, mainly PDP, this time around that has changed. We will see a shift. We will see a change. Mm. So good luck to him. He's doing a good job. It remains to be seen whether um, his push and shove will make it to the to the polls. Uh, that's a good point. And let's move away, because we haven't got that much time, from the PDP to the uh, Nigerian ambassador to Burundi, Elijah Onyaba, who was there. Made some very interesting points, again, in defense of his party, the APC, but also lessons that Nigeria could learn from Burundi. Right. Burundi is one of the poorest countries in Africa, mm. if not the poorest country in Africa, and, and indeed the world. And they have been through a lot of crises, mm. but that to the north uh, by Rwanda, another country that has been through very difficult time, but managed to stabilize. And then but that to the west by DRC, a country crippled by conflict for so many years. And they have managed now to put it together mm. there are lessons to be learned like he said um, nigeria is more complicated though we have more than 250 ethnic groups uh, this is a very big country uh, over to uh, 150 million people um, what we can learn that he mm. says is that we have to be conscious of the fact that there are divisions within the country there should be inclusivity mm. there should be inclusion uh, whether on ethnic lines religious lines we cannot do away with that. These are fault lines that have to be taken into consideration in our political uh, journey in the country. Mm. If that is done with time, the country will, will be better for it. Yeah, that's a very good point. Let's turn to the big story that emerged. Um, I'm sure you've seen the news which came out, came hot off the press a few hours ago that the director general of the P2B Presidential Campaign Council, Donio Kube, has been convicted by a court in Abuja on charges of money laundering. What do you make of that and its implications for the P2B campaign? Um, it's difficult. Um, it's coming at a time where the elections are like about two months away. Donyo Kukbe is or has been a backbone for the Labour Party. He worked in the presidential campaign of um, uh, President Olusegun Basanjo and uh, President Goodluck Jonathan. He knows what he's doing. Um, he knows his onions. He has helped them. He's been the brains behind the Labour Party. I think it's a big blow to the Labour Party. Then th th the thing will be how they handle and how they manage this going forward. Will he resign? Will he step mm. forward? He has an option of paying a fine, according to the story. Even if he pays the fine, uh, what happens thereafter? Because P2B is seen as a candidate with a credibility, Absolutely. transparency, uh, the new face, mm. the new narrative of the young people Squeaky in Nigeria. Clean. Exactly. <laughs> um, he's not defined by avarice, corruption, mm. greed, like many politicians are in Nigeria. He is not that tainted. So it, it's 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 a tough one. They have to manage it very carefully. We, we have to watch and see what they do on the part of Doyo Kube by, hit, by himself. If he decides to resign or to step aside or if the Labour Party will ask him to do that. Um, I don't think this will wipe away or wipe out completely the gains that the Labour Party has made in the last one year or so. The party is, is, is a bit strong, especially with um, young people. Um, it will not utterly affect them. 
but they have to really, really take time to decide how to move forward from this. Mm. It's, 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 it, it can be problematic. That's a, that's a good point. And of course, Mr. Coupe, briefly, has been under considerable pre pressure lately, hasn't he? I mean, he's got quite a bit of flack from his own Labour Party state branch, which fell out with him, and, and now this. Exactly. It's, it's the timing. It's, it's very bad. Mm. And you have to wonder, was this planned? You know, did somebody wait for this time, close to the election, to wing out something and throw it out there? Um, it's, it, 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 it remains to be seen how this will affect them. It might be a dent, but they still have a couple of months uh, to go through this and see that they're able mm. to go to the polls uh, with the, the credibility and the image that they have given to the Nigerian people. Constance, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Dr. Constance Ikoku is a journalist, political affairs commentator, and a Rise News analyst. Thank you very much indeed. You're